there's no reason that you uh, should not have a proper cocktail, no matter where you are. We've got the solution right here. World-renowned mixologist Charles Jolie and restaurant and bar innovator Matt Lindner created Craft House cocktails so that everyone could enjoy a perfectly balanced, real cocktail no matter where they are. Craft House has our secret ingredient, which is you. Charles Jolie is the only American to ever be crowned global bartending champion. He created all seven of the Craft House cocktails with the same strategy that made him one of the most sought after bartenders in the world. The fewer ingredients you have, then you have nothing to hide behind. Every one of those ingredients plays a vital role in terms of the structure of the cocktail. Unlike most ready-to-drink cocktails, Craft House uses only premium spirits, creating unique ABVs for each cocktail, just like if it were mixed behind the bar. Not the cheapest way to do it, maybe not the, maybe doesn't make the best business sense, but it makes the best bartender sense. That kind of attention to detail hasn't gone unnoticed. At the prestigious 2020 San Francisco World Spirits Competition, all seven of the Craft House cocktails took home top medals for taste and 14 double gold medals for their recently redesigned packaging. It literally across the board makes us the highest rated cocktails in the world, which is pretty, pretty spectacular. Others are taking notice too. You can now find Craft House cocktails at luxury five-star resorts like Sea Island, La Fonda, and Blackberry Farm on Amtrak, in airports, and fine hotels across the country, and of course, in your neighborhood stores like Total Wine. Go Craft House, woohoo! Hey everybody, welcome to the Total Wine virtual wine tasting series. I'm Karen Fursell, and I'm lucky enough to be in Chicago virtually with um, a bartending hero, Charles Jolie. Hey, Charles. Hey, thanks so much for, uh, for getting on board and uh, joining me for a cocktail this afternoon. Well, it's five o'clock somewhere. Isn't that what everyone says? Absolutely. Right. Well, I'm a big fan of Craft House, and we know that they are really the world's best ready-made cocktails with premium alcohol and just natural ingredients and you literally have to like pop it open pour it in the glass with ice and then you're done you know so many people are home right now and we've been entertaining outside almost every night and our fridge is stocked but tell us a little bit about um craft house and sort of your background and how they really came to be Absolutely. Thanks for that intro. We think they're the world's best cocktails too. Um, myself and, and the co other co-founder, Matt Lindner of Craft House Cocktails, we're, we're lifelong hospitality uh, professionals. You know, I've been behind the bar, uh, owned and operated bars all over the place. Uh, I'm a career bartender at, at the end of the day. Some people like to say mixologist, but we call ourselves bartenders. And, you know, we opened one of the first craft cocktail bars in the city of Chicago way back in the early 2000s. And um, unlike chefs, we always were really willing to share our secret recipes. You know, if a guest asked for, a, for, you know, love the cocktail, we wrote that recipe down and handed it to them so they could make it at home for their next party or whatever it might be. Um, I feel like that's, that's what makes bartenders like our friends, right? Chefs are so, you know, they're behind the scenes and they're always like hiding their secrets, but bartenders end up being our friends. <laughs> And they, they do, you guys are so nice. You guys do share your secrets. So well, the cocktails you. don't, the cocktails don't hurt, uh, you know, uh, in sharing of secrets <laughs> and also in maybe our amiability as well. Uh, but yeah, we, I mean, I, we love to, we want, you know, I, I love to teach people to make cocktails as well, but inevitably when people would take these recipes home and they would make the cocktail, uh, they would say it just never tasted quite like it did in the bar. I remember it was actually one night I got a call. I'm working a shift on a Friday night, and the host hands me a phone. They're like, you have a phone call. I'm like, Who's, who calls the bartender at 9 o'clock on Friday night? And it was one of our regulars, and they were working one of our recipes. It wasn't quite right. And so I try to walk them through, and we sat down that night after shift, and we're like, can we do what we do behind the bar and put it into – a package format so people can have this at home, have it at parties, have it on the go, whatever it might be. I love that. And you know what, inevitably that's how something like this comes to be, is that there's a story like that and you are problem solving for people. And honestly, it's sort of 
comes together like magic like that. And I love that type of story. I think that that is inevitably that's, you know, people are going to sort of like tell the legend of how Craft House came to be. <laughs> and of course, of course, the phone rings and it, you're like a doctor, you know, you're like, we well, need a house call. Like someone has to come here. Well, I think that's one of the, the feedback I get from my friends is that when you open this and you're, you know, you grab ice and you grab a glass and you open and you pour it over ice, it does feel like a, like you're sitting at a restaurant and you have all those sort of um, artisanal ingredients in there and you sort of, you don't have to worry about all the measurement, the measurements and you don't have to worry about that. So we thank you. We thank no, you. Thank you. We can't do it without you sipping on them. So thank you. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Well, I'm really excited because you are going to sort of take us through. I see that you definitely have some other ingredients, and I hope mm -hmm. that people are watching. Uh, went on to Total Wine and did a little bit of shopping before the series, and so they're going to maybe go ahead and work with us today yeah. and make some cocktails. But I did yeah. notice, I'm looking right now at your copper mug. So, of course, yeah. like I think of Moscow Mule with that, but Tell us a little bit about the history of the copper mug. I know that there is an actual purpose for the Moscow Mule to go in a copper mug. Tell us a little bit about that and the reasons why. Yeah, absolutely. The Moscow Mule is one of our first cocktails and we're, we are gonna actually get into making some drinks together today as well. We're gonna learn a bunch of cocktail tips and techniques uh, as we go through the session. And we really wanna also to people to stick um, through to the end because we're going to give away some cool stuff as well. Uh, we're going to tell you how to get that. I think you've got one of our Yetis right there. Yeah, um, yeah it's my favorite thing that we produced. <laughs> yeah, perfect for your cocktails. A big giveaway. So yeah, cool. Yep. So stay, stay tuned for that. So the Moscow Mule, it's probably the most well known of the classic cocktails that we produce but you know we launched seven years ago uh and and the mule was really just starting to come around and it was one of the classic cocktails that launched vodka into popularity in the 1930s and 1940s it's hard to think back then um you know with the, the popularity of vodka now that people it really didn't know as much about it and it was not the go-to spirit um but the moscow mule was one of those cocktails that helped make that like really launch into popularity. And it was the copper mug that was part of that. And it was the ginger beer. And it was two associates that were sitting on a, a large amount of ginger beer they didn't know what to do with. And someone happened to have all of these copper mugs sitting in a warehouse. And they're like, what are we gonna do? They're like, we're gonna make a cocktail and we're both gonna solve each other's problem. And it was at that moment in, in cocktail history that vodka was really turning the corner. And so do you need a mug to have a Moscow Mule? Absolutely not. Does it make it a little bit nicer? Sure, it chills it down. You've got the frost on the sides of the cup and it is nice to sip out of. But if you've got a rocks glass at home, that's absolutely fine as well. I I love like the stemless glasses. I'm always Perfect. drinking up. I'm always drinking out of mason jars. I don't know. I've been drinking Perfect. out of mason jars before it was cool, like in college. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you ask my roommate, Colleen, we are always drinking out of mason jars. So, Perfect. Um, so I know you're going to, speaking of vodka, we yeah. are going to make a vodka Collins. That's one yep. of the first things that you're going to make. And yeah. I, I think there's, there, one of the ingredients that's like really important in that is that a, is a simple syrup, which yep. a lot of people would see as possibly something they can make at home yep. or buy at the store, but Tell me sort of, because there is like something that you could do at home and maybe infuse it with various different herbs or yep. other, you know, flavorings or maybe even fruits or anything like that. So what's your take on the simple syrup and yeah. how do you sort of want people to proceed? Is, is it something you want to buy at the store or make at home? Yeah, sure. Let's talk about this cocktail and we'll talk about simple syrup because it's one of only four ingredients in this entire cocktail uh, as we get into it. So um, we're going we're gonna to make a vodka Collins, which I love this cocktail to learn as one of the intros to making drinks, because if you can make this vodka Collins, there's so many other cocktails that we can spin off of. And if whether if, if you don't have vodka at home, you're a gin fan or a tequila fan or a whiskey fan, this formula, you can plug and play and do a lot with it. So I've got some ice in my Collins glass already. I'm just going to strain off some of that water that's melted there so I'm not over diluting my cocktail. 
Uh, and then I'm going to build this into a cocktail shaker. I want to show us a, a shaken cocktail. And I also would like to show us later, I'm going to show us a stirred cocktail. These are kind of the two big branches of the family tree. The beauty of this cocktail, you could build it straight in the glass if you wanted to and kind of stir it around. I like to give it a light shake. It just ties everything together really nicely. Uh, and so let's build this uh, real quickly here. So we've got some fresh lemon juice and I'm going to use an ounce of that. I've just squeezed this. If you're gonna to go to the trouble of making cocktails for yourself at home, you wanna put the best ingredients in. Right, I was gonna say, like try to get, use fresh lemons, yep. try to juice it yourself, like yep. don't cut corners. Let's just be honest. Yeah, grab yourself some produce. Um, you know, with your citrus, you wanna juice it when it's room temperature, not cold. So if you keep it in the fridge, take it out when you know, and let it, let it warm up, you get more juice out of it that way do you end up rolling the lemon because sometimes i do that to sure. release the the actual fruit from the rind yeah so yeah a lot of times you'll see that with an orange where you're gonna like peel an orange to eat it because it makes it peel so much easier when you're juicing it's it's really that's kind of dealer's choice it's your preference at that point so i've i've, I've done it both ways uh and and you know it's not gonna you're not gonna get an extra half cup of juice out of the, the lemon but you might get a little bit and if you're you know that little bit might mean one extra cocktail at the end of the day, so maybe it's worth it. Um, so I've got my simple syrup here, which you were talking about, and this is really a workhorse of our cocktails. Now you can see my simple syrup actually has a little bit of color to it, and because I use a raw sugar or demerara sugar, or like something that's unrefined, if you make your simple syrup with white sugar, it'll be clear. You can also buy sugar, uh, simple syrup at Total Wine. Uh, they have a brand called Barsmith. And so you can buy it pre-made. If you want to make it at home, whatever sugar you have, whether it's a, like a sugar in the raw or a, a just a, a standard white sugar, the, the, the staple syrup is going to be one part sugar to one part hot water. And you just stir them together until it's dissolved. It's really that easy. You'll see some other um, recipes and, and doing flavored simple syrups is a great intro into um, taking your cocktails up to that next level. If you're heating it on the stove to, to warm your water up and then put your sugar in to stir it so it dissolves, at that point, treat it just like tea. And you can put any herbs you want into that. You can put any, um, any fruit. If you have some strawberries and you're like, hey, these only have a day left and, um, and I got to do something with them, make some simple syrup. You just steep it for about 10 minutes in that hot simple syrup, strain it out, and then you've got that uh, strawberry simple syrup or mint simple syrup or whatever it is that you might want to do. So we've got lemon and sugar in our cocktail shaker, and I'm going to use um, some vodka here. I'm going to do two ounces of this. So we've got two ounces of our base spirit, one ounce of our citrus, and three quarters of an ounce of our simple syrup. And that is a good ratio to start to make any basic sour, even if you have vodka, gin, tequila, rum, whatever you're in the mood for. And you, for your shaker, do yeah. you – you're using that also to get it really cold. I mean, is that another sort of like mm -hmm. trick to get it super, super cold? So yeah, so shaking our cocktail or stirring our cocktail does a few things. It's going to chill it down for sure. It's going to combine all of the ingredients. It's going to add dilution, which is really important as well. It's going to add quite a bit of water from where you're shaking and breaking up that ice in there. And it's going to add texture to the cocktail as well. Since I'm going to add soda water as well, it's a key ingredient in the Collins, I'm going to give this a very light shake because I don't want to dilute it here and then add more dilution here and have it be washed out. So just a nice light shake. Look at you go. <laughs> I don't even know how to do that. You know, one of the other fun projects I've worked out, all the bar tools I have here, I actually have the opportunity to design as well. So it's, I, I, it's not my first cocktail, but it's... It's not, it's, it's not tough to do at all. And this is the fun of making cocktails at home is that at the end of this, you get a cocktail. And even if your cocktail isn't the best drink you've ever had, there's somebody in the house who's gonna be your, the guinea pig and try your drink, I promise you. I was gonna right. say like cocktail is like, so, making cocktails are so very different than baking. You know, like yeah. you can have a lot of baking fails, but when you're, making cocktails and you're having friends over like nothing is a fail like you, yeah. not, you're never gonna make a drink that like tastes awful and people are like uh, i am not drinking that people are like bring that over there yeah. oh, oh.
<laughs> I, I've, I've seen some stinkers out there, but it's uh, you're you're right though. It's much more forgiving than than baking. It's not like you've worked all day on it and then you're like souffle is dropped and it's a hard as a rock or something. You need to order pizza. Even a so-so cocktail is still a cocktail. But we're gonna get to people making great cocktails. And if it really goes south, you know, like that's what we're here for you. <laughs> I was going to say, like, if you really feel like you're not doing it well or you're too afraid, you just have to pop open the bottle. It's so easy. I was going to yeah. ask you, sort of like, when I get, you know, just from my perspective, like, I do a lot of TV, so I get to do a lot of interviews. And now that I get to be on camera with you, but I did want to ask you, what is your ultimate cocktail either, you know, to make or to drink? Like, what's your favorite? Oof. Uh, I'm, I'm all over the place with cocktails. Uh, certainly. So I, I have a huge amount of input, obviously, into the cocktails that we make for Craft House. We have our team and we all sit down and we talk about what we think would be great. Um, and so I get to pick my favorite cocktail sometimes to then put in the bottle so people can enjoy. So it's actually one of our newer cocktails is one of my favorite cocktails, and that is uh, our pineapple daiquiri. And it's such a beautiful drink. All right, I'm just going to finish up our, our colander real quickly. And I just sliced a nice lemon there and put it in. And then I poured some soda, the soda water into the tin. You probably saw that as well to let it mix together and then right into my cocktail. Sometimes with these colands, you'll see people drop in a, uh, a nice maraschino cherry as well. And this, these Luxardo cherries are something else that you can get at Total Wine. They're really nice quality and they're way away from those bright red Shirley Temple cherries that we you used to get as uh, as kids at weddings or something like that. So um, the vodka Collins there, and that's good. We're gonna set that over there. I'll have that Beautiful. in a in a bit. But yeah, but the pineapple daiquiri is um, truly one of my favorites. It is, uh, um, you know, just it's another cocktail not unlike this Collins. It's got your rum as the base, and we use a really beautiful aged rum from Plantation Rum. Uh, we're using a, a blend of a five year rum, and we're using a delicious pineapple rum that they make, um, all natural lime juice, just enough sugar to balance it all out. And then uh, a dash of bitters, actually some, some bitters from Trinidad, uh, which are uh, an ingredient that we see, we're gonna see that carry through uh, uh, the next drink we're gonna make as well. Uh, and bitters are, you know, this is the staple bitters that you're gonna have at your house, uh, these aromatic bitters, and they're gonna go into your old fashions um, and, and they're delicious with, they have a baking spice um, that goes great with this aged rum. So really, uh, really, really delicious. Uh, like and then you're putting some really interesting flavors together. And maybe sometimes, you know, I think people also get very inspired when they see these drinks because they're not necessarily thinking about some ingredients together. Like I, I know there's the smoky margarita, which is, you know, when we were entertaining, people were picking up this drink and they're like, I would have never thought about putting those two flavors together and then they put it on ice and it's like delicious. And it really has that, that smoky flavor that sort of stays in the back of your throat. And it's like, yeah. it's perfect. Like we were making s'mores and it was like amazing. And it was like, <laughs> first summer. so I love that. I, were you making another, you were going to make a martini too. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to uh, make a martini uh, and that's, and that's smoky margarita too. Uh, that's a, it's one of our newer ones too. It's a mezcal margarita. And so people who love margaritas, um, mezcal is actually kind of like we think about it like the tequila's granddad. It actually it has a longer history than tequila uh, and the way it's produced, it carries, it's roasted in um, uh, the hearts of the, the agave plants and it carries through and that smokiness stays the whole way even into our cocktails. And it, it's a really nice, uh, really, really nice twist on it. Uh, I do want to share uh, one little bit as well uh, on some garnishes because we saw, I just did a simple um, lemon in our Collins, and we're going to do a nice orange uh, twist and get some oils. I've got some mint in here that I've just picked out of the garden. Uh, this is actually gone to flower, so this has some little beautiful purple flowers on the top of it now. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, you cannot uh, under undervalue the importance of a good garnish. When you put something into a nice glass, uh, you put the right garnish on it, it's part of the experience. And so something like mint uh, is really uh, a wonderful workhorse herb, especially in the summer. Um, you can have it in your garden. It's really easy um, to plant. And it, of course, it's available year round at grocery stores. It's easy to find. 
uh, as well. So one quick tip I'd love to share with folks at home is how to preserve this stuff because you see a cocktail and we taste first with our eyes. You know, before you ever sip a drink, you pick it up and you're kind of assessing it. You're judging the glass and the garnish and does it look appetizing just like when we go out to dinner. Right. Uh, it's the same thing with a drink. So there's a really easy tip on this. So I've got some ice water right here. Uh, and when you pick your mint or even when you take it home from the grocery store, we're going to prep it real quickly. You're going to strip the leaves off of the stem and okay. leave a nice, the nice top portion of this. Strip, strip them down. So we're just kind of trimming it down so it looks almost like flowers now okay. with uh, some leaves at the top and then like your little bouquet at the top. And then I've got all of my leaves, which we're going to save. These could be used for muddling into a cocktail. Maybe we're going to make a mojito or an old fashioned or something like our Southside uh, cocktail, which is a, it's a classic that's really come back. Uh, and we've used this drink at the bar for years to kind of get people drinking gin again. Uh, and it's kind of like the, um, the Baca Collins in a way. It's, it's a gin sour. So it's gin uh, and lime and a little bit of simple syrup. And then the mint is uh, the mint flavors uh, in, in the cocktail itself. And that's done by muddling or uh, a number of different ways that you can get the mint in. So once you strip it down and you have this pretty garnish mint, we're going to save this so we can do something like I had in my Moscow Mule with the mint. You just put it upside down into ice water and you let it wow. set. Um, come back, you can come back 10, 15 minutes later. Um, I, I've done the Kentucky Derby making cocktails uh, at Churchill Downs for several years. And so we do hundreds of pounds of mint like this. You pull it out, give it a nice cut on the stems, just like, a, like if you're putting flowers into a vase at home, it gives it a nice fresh way to take. And then into some room temp water, it will last for days and it will stay pert and beautiful and aromatic. So a really nice, it's, we don't want to uh, grill all that mint or spend all the money on it at the store and then get it home and have it be wilty and, and limp. It's no fun. I love that. I love that. And I, you know, I think it's really important to talk about like really finishing the drink and, and knowing like you don't want to just throw everything in together because I, I love that the packaging is there for this and you guys spent so much time on your drinks and that people should really spend that, the, the love and sort of that care to make those drinks at home. I think a great way to finish a night is often with a proper martini. Uh, for me, like some of the brighter, more refreshing cocktails are a good way to start. And then I like to finish with something that's got a little more kick, that kind of that nightcap. And something like our rum old fashioned is perfect for that. Uh, old fashions are absolutely on fire right now. It is the cocktail of the moment in, uh, in, in, the, in the bar world. And typically we see the old fashions made with American whiskey, bourbon or rye, but we use um, what I like to call whiskey drinker rums. Uh, and they're long age rums, uh, one from Jamaica, uh, one from Barbados, both made by plantation rum. Uh, and we then blend them with some of those bitters that we were talking about, except we're using a chocolate bitter. I was um, noticing there's, there's that like under the under like lay of chocolate. Bitters, bitters have become really hot these days. I mean, when, if you go to a restaurant, obviously pre, you know, pre Corona, but um, you know, I've noticed when I've been sitting at a bar, I mean, the amount of bitters on the bar and the amount of different flavors and the, what they've infused in those bitters, that's really cool. Cause I feel like that sort of leveled up drinks. I don't know if you talk a little bit about that. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it, it's really almost, bitters are almost the salt and pepper of the cocktail world. We use them to season and add some um, nuance and flavors to our cocktails. And like I said, so these aromatic bitters are going to be the workhorse. In our martini, we're going to actually use the Angostura orange bitters. These are the Angostura aromatic, and both of those, again, available at uh, Total Wine. And we work with our friends at Bittered Sling to make a, those special chocolate bitters for our rum old-fashioned. So absolutely delicious. So this rum old-fashioned and the martini go great together because they're both stirred drinks. That first cocktail we shook. And so we look at that kind of shaken and stirred. A lot of people ask, why do you shake one? Why do you stir one? As a general rule of thumb, uh, we shake cocktails that have either citrus or fruit juice in them. Uh, and cocktails that are all spirits, we stir. Now, people will say, of course, they've seen people shake the heck out of a martini. And 
in the, in the more modern world, people did start shaking martinis uh, for, for many, many years. Now people have been shaking martinis. But classically, going back to the 1800s where this cocktail was born, it was stirred and it was certainly made with gin as well. So at the end of the day, drink what you like, but we're going to make the classic gin martini uh, in a nice ratio with the beautiful vermouth. I'm going to start with some of those Angostura orange bitters uh, real quickly here. And then I'm going to do a two to one ratio of vermouth to our gin. One part or one ounce. Uh, and I'm going to use this Bianco vermouth. And what are you oh. making it? What are you making it in? You're just making it in a glass, um, almost like a pitcher. Yeah. So this is actually a mixing glass design. This is part of my Craft House by Fortessa bar line. Actually, uh, one of the, some of the bar tools that I've designed. And it's if you have a proper mixing pitcher, it's nice to have. It's not essential. Use a big pint glass. It's fine to do it, uh, or just like a, a big size glass so you can get some ice in there and work it away, uh, work it around. So I've got the vermouth. I've got the bitters, and now I'm going to use this gin di fiori, two ounces of that. So two two ounces of gin, one ounce of vermouth, and you can adjust uh, your your ratio. It's a very personal thing. Uh, in the beginning, when this cocktail was first coming out in the, in the late 1800s, you actually had more vermouth than you did gin in the cocktail, and then it came even, and then it flipped around, and then the vermouth totally was just like a whisper in the cocktail. Uh, but when we stir this drink, like I'm doing here, it is doing the same thing as shaking in terms of dilution, temperature, combining all the cocktails, but the texture is completely different. When you shake the heck out of a drink, you're aerating it, tons and tons of bubbles. It feels totally different when you take a sip. When you stir it, it's really got a smooth, lovely texture. Uh, and things like Old Fashions, Manhattans, martinis are really well served. Um, do a side-by-side -side comparison at home. Shake the heck out of one and stir one, and they're worlds apart in terms of um, in terms of texture. I'm gonna. I just got my. Might be a silly question, but I I I'm an ice person. Like I love different types of ice, um, and we actually have an ice cabinet because when we did our kitchen, like it was a big deal to have like really great ice. But yeah. what? What what kind of ice do you love to make your cocktails with? And what, you know what what is I think it is important to have a certain kind of ice. Yeah. So ice is you know I consider um, uh, paying that extra attention to your ice is like two hundred level bartending. You know we get past like the one hundred ones of like some of the simple I syrup. Like, I just leveled up. I feel like you I did. just graduated from something. Yeah, and it, it does make a difference. So. You, you see people, a lot of people use bigger cubes or uh, you go to bars and they'll have perfectly clear ice and that, that ice melts much, much slower. Um, I, I just, you know, at, at home, you can, you can do perfectly clear ice. Uh, it's a little bit of a process and you have to freeze it in a big cooler and then and break it down. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but I just use some silicone molds that give me a bigger size cube. So uh, they're not as dense as the really pretty ice that you see at bars, at bars but it's a nice size cube, and so it, it's still going to melt a little bit slower, uh, and it's, it's, it's better than um, the stuff that comes out of the freezer typically. But I'm not, shame, I'm not ice shamey. Like, it's totally fine. That ice from the freezer, if I come over and you're entertaining, crack me open a cocktail, I'm going to be totally fine with that. Yeah. I'm not, you know, we're not, we're not, so I, I'm going to, last but not least, I'm going to garnish this martini, and I'm going to do an orange twist. I just used my vegetable peeler. And I and I peeled a nice strip of the off of the orange, and then I trimmed it down into a nice a nice shape here, and then we give it one quick squeeze to express the oils over the top, and it's going to give this great orange aroma right over the top of the cocktail. And then so when you bring this up to your nose to take a sip, yeah. you're getting that orange oil, and then uh, it really just combines lovely with all of uh, all the flavors in the in the gin and the vermouth and the bitters that we put into this cocktail. So a little shaken, a little stirred, a little poured straight over ice. Um, hopefully folks learned a few tips today as well. We do have a giveaway, which is yep. amazing. Um, and so we are going to be giving away the Yeti. Get over to our website at crafthousecocktails.com and enter your email. And we're going to be doing um, uh, drawings through that for some fun swag, including 
that Yeti. You've allowed us to truly like level up and take the next step. And, um, you know, I, I really believe like people want to have those hero moments at home and know these, are, this is like truly learning from, you know, the expert and, and how to really do it at home without having to, you know, read all the books and do all the hard work. It, truly is a, it's passion and love and finding the best ingredients and just, you know, finding something that you want to make for people that you love and for entertaining purposes, making sure that you just enjoy the process. And I think you've done that for us and showed us some tips and tricks. And I love that. Um, thank, you. thank you so much for yeah, thank your you. Time. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks to Total Wine for having us. And uh, we, we have a nice stock of cocktails here. I think it's going to be a decent afternoon. Yes. I was like, oh, you know, my kids are gone. So things are going <laughs> to, things are looking up for the afternoon. Absolutely. And if, and if folks have questions or comments or anything else, they can swing over to crafthousecocktails.com. Follow us on Instagram at Drink Craft House. We're a super small team. So when you send a message, it comes to us. We actually, we get those messages. There's no, uh, there's no office anywhere that these things disappear through. It is a small and focused team uh, that is really passionate about cocktails and entertaining and, and getting these in your hands. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. And thank you for letting me be part of the process. And um, I'm a big fan of the brand. So keep doing what you're doing and sure. cheers to you guys. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers.